we're gonna try this we're gonna try this again sorry friends it gave me some kind of funky internet um connection problem there so we're gonna keep trying this again i'm so sorry so go to facebook.com slash fest events also so anyway the reason that we're here tonight is not to not to talk at all a lot except to talk about food one of the things that i absolutely love i've been doing this now for 25 years i went to school at johnson and wells i also uh am you know have done do a lot with uh wine and beer and spirits and so um one thing that i am enjoying tonight i want to show you here I absolutely love my friend Carl Dorneman. Shout out to Carl if he is watching. My friend Carl Dorneman is uh, the proprietor of Reverend Spirits. Reverend Spirits puts out uh, this vodka and also bourbon. This is from R.D. Wellham Distillery in Norfolk's Ghent section. I love this vodka. I love the uh, bourbon also that they do. And so uh, on my Coast Live segment, I um, am fortunate enough to have my own radio show, the Virginia Eats and Drinks show, uh, also to um, do a segment on Coast Live. And so the other day, I've started making my own lemon-infused vodka. Look at that. So I'm going to be, oh, I'm sideways? Am I sideways? Neil Bowden says I'm sideways. Well, honey, you ought to know that I'm always sideways. Anyway, let's see if I can change that. I was trying to do, I'm sideways, huh? Well, let's see if I can do something about that, huh? Well, thank you for letting me know because on my phone here, it doesn't look like I'm sideways. Maybe I should be looking at my own computer and see what's going on, huh? Well, I'll be darned, I am, I am sideways, aren't I? So let's fix that real fast here. What about that? Whew. You know what? I am just going to hold it like this for a while. How about that? Is that better, Neil? Thank you. Thank you for letting me know, too. It's kind of like those friends that, you know, some people will let you know if you have a booger or not in your nose, and some people won't. Neil's the person who lets you know if you have the booger. So I appreciate that, Neil. So we'll worry about all the fancy get up and just uh, the, the different... Um, I'm not upside down, am I? Am I upside down now? I shouldn't be upside down. You're kidding me, Peter Freeman. Am I really upside down? I'm not upside down, am I? I am booger free. Thank you. So anyway, let's talk about let's talk about making this wonderful infused vodka. And so it just starts out by getting some your favorite vodka. Like I said, I love the um, it, basically I love using Virginia anything, Virginia spirits. Uh, Virginia food, supporting Virginia restaurants. I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm not going to be supporting anything that is not um, that, that is not Virginia and nothing that's uh, a chain or anything else. And so I just put the zest of a lemon in here. You'll want to take about two or three days, but look what I have been doing here. I have made what I'm going to call a Chesapeake Bay Breeze. And so I put a good shot or two or ten um, well, yeah. Anyway, a couple of shots of that lemon uh, vodka in here, along with a little bit of seltzer water, and also with um, some cranberry juice. I put the real cranberry juice. I don't put that cocktail stuff in there. And so I'm going to put some of my recipes and everything on my Facebook group. Join facebook.com slash group slash Virginia Eats and Drinks, and I'm going to take a little sippy sip. Mm. And that's so refreshing, that lemon, that cranberry, uh, that is really, really nice there too. So the pot holder looks crooked. You're absolutely right, Rex Hammaker. I don't know who um, hung that pot holder, but it does look a little crooked, but we love the person that did the work anyway. So one of the reasons I'm doing this for fest events is, you know, we talked about right now, and one of the things I did um, this lemon vodka for, you know, you're cooking a lot, you're cooking something with lemons, you know, and so what do you do with that zest? Well, you make, you know, if life gives you lemons, you make uh, lemonade. Well, no, you make lemon vodka if you're around in my household, but, um, you know, oh, let me say hello to my birthday present. I turned 55 this year, so I didn't get a chip to, didn't get a chance to go to Paris, so this was Paris right there. So um, anyway, 
So, you know, we're not wanting to waste anything. We're having a lot of leftovers. We're buying a lot of things from the grocery store. So I wanted to do these videos with fest events to let you know how you could be economical but still live an absolutely fabulous life too so say you're cooking a lemon chicken or say you're using some lemon for you know anything else well you have that zest so now you can do these infused drinks and over the course of this series i'm going to show you how to do different flavored uh, infused alcohol yourself using Virginia spirits which we absolutely love but doing um, different ones yourself want to know how to make your own fireball I'm going to show you how over the course but you're going to have to keep tuning in and again please join my Facebook group too um, at facebook.com slash group slash Virginia Eats and Drinks where I'm going to be posting the different uh, recipes and everything as well but um, so uh, you know what if you have, say, leftover pizza, for example? Now, of course, that usually doesn't happen for very long, but if you do, you know, what do you do with some leftover pizza? Well, of course, you can eat it just cold the next day for breakfast, and there's absolutely nothing wrong, you know, with that, but I want to give you some ideas for that along the way. So, gee, what do you do with leftover pizza? Well, one of the things that I like to do for breakfast the next day is I like to take the leftover pizza, I like to scrape the top off the pizza, and then I like to make a nice healthy egg white omelet and then fold the pizza toppings in with the omelet and a little bit of extra cheese and then maybe a little bit of tomato sauce on top and then use it that way. You can also reheat the toppings of that pizza and put it on top of a burger that you grilled outside. Um, you could also take the pizza toppings um, and then uh, you could fold that into, um, you know, say some type of casserole, you know, so almost like a frittata, almost like an um, a, a omelet or something that you're doing and all as well. So ask me a question. Ask me a question. That's what I'm here for. Ask me a question. You can get crazy. Let's get crazy. Leftover pizza. Yes, Chris. Do you ever have leftover pizza? What do you do with your leftover pizza, Mr. 757 Foodie? What do you do with your leftover pizza? Ah, oh, yes. So, what about what? What do y'all? What questions do y'all have? Ask me. You can ask me. Ask me anything. What questions do you have? I'm here. I am here to answer your questions. One of the questions that came up the other day. I had a little bit of um, leftover broccoli sitting in the back of the refrigerator that was just about to go too bad. You know, and uh, you know how you can tell when broccoli is going bad, don't you? It starts wearing leather and hanging out with the wrong kind of uh, wrong kind of vegetables. But um, boom. But um, I think that calls for another sip. What are y'all drinking? Tell me what y'all are drinking tonight too, because you know that's the thing about COVID nineteen is it can do a lot of things, but it can't tell time. So every hour is happy hour right now. Favorite Midori cocktail? Oh, Midori! My goodness gracious, we go. We're going back to the '80s now, aren't we? I remember that way back when. Mm, I love me some Midori. Um, yes, Midori cocktail. Well, you know, it's got that beautiful uh, honeydew melon flavor. So one of the things I might would do with I'm trying to remember. It seems like to me back in the '80s, I haven't had Midori in a while. I have to tell you, but back in the '80s. It seemed like a lot of people were doing it in with margaritas, and I did really love um, the margaritas a lot. But um, you know, I would think making uh, putting a shot of Midori down in the bottom of a glass, and then a big shot of uh, soda on top, and then maybe putting a couple of chunks of honeydew on top as a garnish or something like that, or maybe getting some honeydew melon and garnish and uh, pulsating it in a um, in a blender along with a little bit of Midori and then stirring that in with a little bit of vodka or something like that and maybe something like um, even like a whipped cream vodka so you almost have like a dessert or something like that. Ooh, bananas are, oh, how, the, hope, hope that helps with the Midori. Um, bananas are going brown, help. Well, a couple of things you can do with the bananas is you can go ahead, it depends on how far they're going, but you know you can cut the bananas up and you can freeze them uh, and then you can use those later um, uh, you can use those later, um, you know, with um, uh, baking or something, or you can go ahead and make a banana cake or banana bread. You can go ahead and mash those up and uh, use those in place of oil with some of the recipes that you're doing. Uh, you can also um, use those in, to make like an ice cream. Uh, frozen uh, frozen and chopped up bananas make a really good ice cream. I'll try to remember to 
post a recipe for that in just a little bit too. And oh my goodness, what? Oh, here's a here's a loaded question. What can you do with some wrinkled up turnips? <laughs> <laughs> and out of desperation, I brought bought a jar of pickled beets, wrinkled up turnips. Well, you know, that's a loaded question. I'm going to need a sip on that, honey, before I answer that one. Well, you know, what I would do with any root vegetable is I would cut that up into small dices. Depends on how wrinkled they are. And um, maybe cut that up with some other root vegetables. Wait a minute. Let me get a sip here. Maybe some sweet potatoes, some regular potatoes, um, maybe some regular beets, maybe not, not pickled beets, and then I would toss them in some olive oil, a little bit of rosemary, and then I would uh, put those in the oven 350, 375 degrees and roast them until pork tender, and then I would use those in omelets or I would use them as a side dish or I would put them on top of pasta, uh, that sort of thing. And a jar of pickled beets. Well, I love pickled beets. My goodness gracious. You know, one of the things you could do is to use that pickled beet juice um, and actually make kind of like a savory cocktail with it. You could chop up the pickled beets and then really, really fine and use those into um, uh, a potato salad or into a, a um, uh, deviled eggs. Um, you could also cut them up and use them into a, like a niçoise salad. Um, I hope some of those some of those actually help in ideas there too. And then as I go back through and I look at some of these comments, I'll also help try to try to hit some of more of the questions here. So Brandon Brandon Hinton drinking a delicious cocktail of plantation three star rum, coconut water, and fresh pineapple juice. That sounds really really good. Um, that sounds really really good there too. Let's see. And hello, Victoria. You sound you you look you you always absolutely fabulous. Making a Woodford old fashioned. I love old fashioned. You know where old fashions got their name is because that is a traditional uh, cocktail. It's been going back for hundreds and hundreds of years, and it's probably one of the first original what we think of as a cocktail. You know, there are people that were making mixed drinks where you're putting one or two ingredients together, but as far as actually having ingredients that come together to what we consider a cocktail that was actually one of the very first cocktails and so uh, by the turn of the late 1800s people were asking for a cocktail made in that old-fashioned way meaning a cocktail that uh, had bitters in it and some water and whiskey uh, and that was done originally around the turn of the 1800s and so I'm actually finishing a book now for the History Channel called Virginia Distilled um, uh, 400 years of drinking in the Old Dominion. So, yes. Um, so, let's see. I've answered somebody's question about wrinkled old turnips, uh, the bananas. Um, what other questions do you have? Y'all threw a lot at me at once, which was really cool. I felt like I was on Jeopardy or something, you know. Um, so what, let me ask this too, because we're doing this for our friends at Fest Events, which I absolutely love and I'm really involved with and have been fortunate enough to for a long time. What, um, what food festivals or what food elements at fest events uh, do you love the best and what are you missing right now? Because, of course, uh, right now we've, we've missed that, that spring, wine food, uh, spring wine festival, which I always love. And uh, hopefully we're going to get things going may, maybe, hopefully, by July 1st. And there's always that great American picnic and everything with all those great fireworks. What, what, are, what are some of the food festivals that... Uh, maybe maybe we should say let's accent the positive. What food festivals are you look forward to forward to for fest events coming up? Let me know that and all as well. And then I know that Brandon is not the only Brandon and Victoria are not the only ones drinking out there. I mean, come on, I know a lot of you people are watching right now, and I know that you're not the only ones that are drinking out there. So let me know what you're enjoying. Let me know what you're enjoying. This is really good. I am going to be posting. The recipe well first i'm going to be posting the meth well first i'm going to be posting how to find out about this incredible gin from my friend carl dorneman as um reverend spirits but again as long as you support virginia i mean virginia is you know that's where we are and especially now we've got to keep our money local we've really got to support local not the chains not the big boys we've got to keep the money local there are a lot of places that make local vodka that you can use 
Um, so support local. And then I'm going to give you the method on how to make your own. Look at that, how beautiful. Now, can you imagine? I just did this in a small little jar. Can you imagine making some of this and dropping off on the stoops of some of your neighbors for them to enjoy? They're going to love you, especially um, when it comes to Christmas time. And then I'll also give you the recipe for this Chesapeake Bay Breeze cocktail, too. So what else are you drinking? Let me know. Y'all have gotten quiet out there. Sometimes that makes me nervous when people get quiet. Let me know what's going on out there. What other questions do you have? We've talked about wrinkled turnips. We've talked about pickle beets. We've talked about uh, bananas. What else is going on? What other questions do you have? Anything else left over? What, what leftovers do you have? What leftovers do you have? Are you ordering Mexican? Are you ordering Chinese? Are you concerned about keeping things in your refrigerator for a long period of time and not knowing whether it's safe to eat? Because goodness knows, you know, you don't want to get salmonella or E. coli or another foodborne illness right now and still have to worry about, you know, the coronavirus too. So what else is going on? Ooh, let's see. I think that, oh, you know what? I had scrolled too far down. I'm sorry. Um... I wasn't looking. Oh, soft shell sandwich. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so Lisa, you're drinking wine. That's awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, and Janet, you're drinking mimosas. Oh, that's awesome. Those are good any time of day, although I think a mimosa is a little bit of abuse of champagne, but that's still good. Oh, and Becky, Maker's Mark and soda. Perfect, perfect. Monica, some crawfish with gin and ginger. Perfect. Okay, Jordan, so you have a question. What's a cocktail you can make with the mint in your garden? Okay, so excellent. So you can make, you know, obviously a mint julep. And most people don't realize mint juleps come from Virginia. Repeat after me, mint juleps come from Virginia. Most people don't realize that Kentucky comes from Virginia. That's right. Bourbon County, Virginia was Bourbon County, Virginia before we let Kentucky break away. And they took Bourbon County with it. Virginia was the birthplace of bourbon, and Virginia was the birthplace of mint juleps. It's easy to make a mint julep. I'll post the recipe for that, too. And um, But you can also just make a lot of, you know, one thing that I like to do is to steep some mint with a little bit of simple syrup and then just pour, you know, a really nice big shot of whiskey or something in that, too, over uh, some ice. And so that's a little bit like a mint julep, but it's a little bit different, uh, you know, as well. But you can also use um, it to, you know, even this would be nice just with a little bit of mint muddled in the bottom. Mint plays really, really nice with a lot of things. And so, Karen, you want to know what to do with stale donuts. Well, this is what I would do with stale donuts. I would take those bad boys, I would chop those stale donuts up, and then I would put them down in the bottom of um, some glasses, maybe even a little bit like this, however many people you're going to serve. Uh, chop them up, you know, bite size, and then pour a little bit of liqueur over them. Maybe pour a little bit of Grand Marnay. Maybe pour a little bit of Bailey's over them. Maybe pour a little bit of Fireball over them. Whatever your favorite syrupy sweet liqueur is. And then put a big old scoop of ice cream over them. And then pour a little bit of hot uh, fudge sauce over them or hot cho or chocolate sauce over them or caramel sauce over them, and a lot of whipped cream, because goodness knows life is too short not to have a lot of whipped cream. And then uh, people that know me know that I absolutely adore maraschino cherries. I do. I love them. And so, yes, Jordan, let mint juleps come from Virginia. Repeat after me, mint juleps come from Virginia. And then I would start have like a little miniature trifle that way for, um, for the stale donuts. You could also take the stale donuts, and depending on what, what type they were, if you had the yeast donuts, you could cut them in half, and if they, if they were like the yeast donuts like you'd get from Krispy Kreme, Krispy Kreme, and then you could um, dip them in a little bit of egg and orange juice mixture, and then um, then fry them up almost like a French toast, and enjoy those. Let's see here. So Phyllis, well, hello Phyllis from all the way from Charlottesville, the land of Mr. Jefferson. Will and I are here. We're going to um, be drinking. Rosemary Gimlets, yes, from David Leibowitz. Rosemary is one of my favorite herbs. We have planted, gosh, Doug, how many rosemary plants did we plant last year? 
About 30? No, no, we planted, God, what? How many, we planted, oh my gosh, we planted like 30 rosemary plants all the, all the way around our house. We love rosemary. And you know, rosemary is very associated with Virginia. And here at Virginia Beach, it's the herb that's associated with Grace Sherwood, the witch of Pungo. She supposedly brought rosemary to the Commonwealth uh, because she was a healer and used it a lot for that. So I absolutely love that. And rosemary has that wonderful piney flavor. So cheers to you, baby. And oh, a donut cocktail. Well, let's see, a donut cocktail. Hmm. <sighs> you know, you could get some of that whipped cream vodka, or better yet, instead of buying something chemically, you could use a Virginia vodka, and then you could get some of that coffee syrup, like you pour in your coffee in the morning, just like a French vanilla, and pour a little bit in that. And then um, maybe get, it depends on what kind of donut that you have, but you use that either as a garnish or if it was like one of those cake donuts, you could even maybe float one of those little bad boys right on top and then sprinkle a little bit of powdered sugar on there. And how does that sound? Mm -hmm. that sounds delicious to me. I need another sip on that. Cheers. So, oh, hello, Rich Chinook. You're watching. It's good to see you, friend. I haven't seen you in a while. Cheers. And hello, you're back, Chris. Nothing like a good Manhattan. Oh, yes, you were right with some delicious maraschino cherries. I love a good Manhattan. And you're back, Peter Freeman. Cheers. Good to see you, too. What other questions do y'all have? What else are y'all drinking? And remember, I want to keep emphasizing that what we're doing here, we're going to be doing this at 7 o'clock every Tuesday and every Saturday night. This is the very first event, and this is a very, very special event because what we're doing here is part of Norfolk's uh, Fest Events Stay at Home event series. Uh, we love Norfolk Fest Events. We're so proud to partner with Norfolk Fest Events, um, and this is part of their Stay at Home event series. There's a lot more than just this going on. Go to NorfolkFestEvents.org NorfolkFestEvents.org. You can get the whole lineup. There's a whole series of stuff that you can watch from the comfort of your home. Yoga classes, um, activities for kids, um, scavenger hunts, not just for kids, but also for adults. All kinds of stuff that you can do. It's all, you know, and it's all free. But most people don't realize that Norfolk Fest Events is nonprofit. So if you are able, contribute a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you can do. Again, there's a link on NorfolkFestEvents.org. You can also get on their Facebook page at uh, Facebook.com slash uh, Norfolk Fest Events too. So what you say in here, um, oh, cheers, Peter. Oh, drinking Stella. I, I, like, I like to support Virginia beer, but I do love me a good Stella Artois too. And that is a really good beer. So, Phyllis Hunter, I used to take my scissors, yes, to Crocs, Crocs 19th Street Bistro, and harvest Laura's rosemary plants. Yes, yes, yes. What do you think about the COVID restrictions at the ABC stores? Well, you know, so far they haven't really affected me very much, except that it has been a little awkward uh, having to know precisely what you want when you go in, because I do sometimes like to walk the aisles, but um, with my partner, Doug, um, say hello, Doug. Hello. Doug says hello. Um, we go to the uh, package store on base at Oceana, and so far they they let you in, and you can actually walk the aisles there. But, you know, we're all going to do what we're all going to do, and, um, you know, we're all, we're all in this together, you know, and... Um, We've just got to we've got to play by the rules and we've got to be supportive of each other. And the most important thing is we've really just, you know, uh, beyond beyond a government level, we've got to be supportive of each other individually as friends, as family, as Internet friends. I mean, a lot of y'all, you know, that I chat with so much on my Facebook group page, I've never met you, but you're my friends and I love you. I love you to pieces. And you know, um, my restaurant friends, we just got to support each other and we've really got to support local now more than ever. Your local, your local garden shop, your local restaurant, everything local. And you know, Norfolk Fest events is local. It's local. Those, those festivals, think about what life would be out, you know, without, without those wine festivals, without Harbor Fest, without Bayou Boogaloo. 
So that's why I'm so happy to be part of this series. And I want you to not only tune in here on Tuesdays and Saturdays at 7, you know, for us to connect and to have some fun and to answer some of these crazy culinary questions and have a few drinks or a few drinks, uh, but to, you know, but, but just to, to connect and be part, you know, of this big family here in, in coastal Virginia, you know. Um, I, I really love it too. So, so again, you know, it's the the Norfolk Fest Events Stay at Home uh, event series. Um, go to festevent, uh, festevents.org. Um, and um, oh, you're so you're back at Crackers, Rich. That's very good. Oh, so Karen's got another. Karen's got another question. As we're starting to wrap things up here, how many times can you refreeze leftover spaghetti sauce? <laughs> Kara, you're not you're not doing it right if you're if you're having to refreeze it. You know, honestly, especially if it had meat in it, I don't think I would refreeze it more than once. I just wouldn't play that game of re of and, and you know and and really even if it didn't have meat in it, I'm not sure that I would. I, I'm not sure that I would just what one thing that you want to do when you here's what you want to do. If you make a big pot of of say spaghetti sauce, when you portion it out. One of the most important things you want to do, first of all, is to um, is to make sure that you uh, let it cool properly before you start freezing it or refrigerating it. Put it in airtight containers. Put it in reasonably sized containers. Don't put it don't put it in a big pot. Don't put it in a big container. So don't put it if you know that you know you're going to be using. Um, enough to feed five people you know the next time then don't put it in a container that's going to feed 20 people so put it in containers it's going to be what portion you want the next time because it's you know once it comes out and it thaws and it and it you reheat it every time it it leaves that temperature danger zone you're opening it yourself up for foodborne illness and so i would just minimize anything and just portion it out properly uh, in in the right size, you know, container. Oh, Karen, I'm sorry. Well, don't don't kill yourself and Peter. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Have another drink. What are you drinking, Karen? I know what you're drinking. You're drinking Grey Goose and soda, aren't you? I know your drink. Mm. So we're going to take one last question. One last question here, and that Jordan says... What's the secret to cooking peppers perfectly when making stuffed peppers? A question from Donna Stewart. All right. Well, you know, one of the things you want to do is to um, to cut the peppers in half and to get all of the um, the, the ribs and the seeds and everything out. Um, you know, I will also um, uh, take those peppers and I will kind of... Um, I'll, I'll stuff everything, and then I like to put them in just uh, a, it, when I put them in the, the baking dish in the oven, I put just a little bit of water to get a little bit of moisture in it, um, and then I just keep watching them. I'll put a recipe up for the, the stuffed peppers uh, with that, because I love stuffed peppers. And it kind of depends, too, on what you do, what you put in the stuffed peppers. Uh, because when they're cooking from the inside out, it depends on what is in there and how much moisture it's bringing to the party and all first. Um, and, you know, it does help because it does have that, that waxy outside. It will help to, um, to blanch them and get that, that, some of that on the outside out, you know, and all too. And hello, Lynn from Suffolk. It's good to see you as well. Um, so we're going to be wrapping things up here. It's, it's 7.33. I have had a blast. I hope you've had a blast. It's so good to have you in my home. And I never could have had, it's not that Doug and I live in like, you know, an Airstream trailer or anything, but we never could have had this many people in our home at once. And so this has been a blast and I really have enjoyed it. Uh, now y'all kind of know a little bit about the premise of what um, the Facebook Live is all about, and um, I'm going to be going back through and posting a few things. Um, uh, again, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, please join facebook.com slash groups slash Virginia Eats and Drinks. Um, also, uh, again, go to um, festevents.org. You're going to find out more information about the schedule for all of the other great things that are going on. 
and then uh, if you are financially able to contribute a little bit to the PayPal fundraising campaign for Fest events, which is nonprofit, please do. Um, and then keep keep you know keep asking questions, and we'll get things answered. But remember, I'm going to be back on Saturday night at seven o'clock, and so it's so good to see you. Um, we're going to stay. We're going to stay here. We're going to be happy. We're going to be healthy. We're going to get through everything together. Remember, support Virginia. Support local support each other be happy be healthy it's good to see all of y'all i love each and every one of you Mwah. cheers <laughs>